Hey everyone, uh, just sit tight. I uh, got something I'm gonna do today. Thought we'd play a little Escape Velocity Override, and then I got a little bit of a treat. Somebody on the Macintosh Garden posted up on the EV Override entry a selection of Infinity models that apparently were actually used in the game. So what I intend to do is play a little EV Override just a bit to refresh my memory on the whole thing. And then we'll take a look at those files. And, and I don't have my my whole render farm set up right now, but eventually I'd like to take some of the choice ones and uh, render them out. 1080p. Something like that. So just sit tight for now. I'm going to get everything set up. And uh, enjoy these wonderful soundscapes by Kevin McLeod. And uh, I'll be right back. Just want to make sure that everything looks good with the audio this time, because that's kind of tricky sometimes. All right, sounds good, sounds good. <clears throat> All right, let's get started. Oh man, a little tip that I just picked up today. Um, I was running this machine, it's an iMac G4, and it was doing this thing where, it, you know, as I was moving the cursor, it would stop and lag, and stop and lag, and stop and lag. And man, I couldn't figure out what was wrong, but if you have this problem, one of my recommendations is, uh, Go into your extension manager. Hopefully it's not as big a mess as mine. And uh, turn off FBC indexing scheduler. And in my case, because I'm using Infinity, these back burners and network rendering support engines are brutal. Um, I figured this out with this awesome program called uh, processinfo.app. Pretty sweet. Who did this? Eh, it doesn't say. I don't know where this came from. I found it on the garden. Super handy but we don't need that anymore. So it looks like everything's nice and smooth, smoother than it's ever been on my channel because, I mean, this has been a problem forever. Um, but anyways, let's load up some EV Override. All right, I'm going to start a new one. Uh... I'm just gonna call myself obsolete. Yeah, that's fine. And I always like to call it. Ah, oh, this is pretty loud, eh? Sorry. Whew. I'm gonna turn that down just a bit. Uh, yeah, Star Seeker's fine. We won't have this. So, if you're not familiar with Escape Velocity, this is um, a series of games by Ambrosia Software that are just absolutely massive on the Mac platform in the 90s. And they were sort of one of the few examples of Mac software where we could, you know, hold it over the heads of our Windows friends and say, well, we get to play Escape Velocity. There wasn't a lot of those. Marathon, Escape Velocity. Um, this is Escape Velocity Override, the second in the in the uh, the series. Uh, not my favorite. A lot of people really love it. I, you know, I don't have much experience with EV as it is, but uh, this title is pretty cool. It's basically just the first escape velocity with some new maps and some new ships. So let's take a look. Look at that. So yeah, the first thing that grabs me about the art in this game is that is clearly infinity. That has to be infinity. Mankind leapt for the stars as it did for all its other frontiers with greed for the riches to be had and ignorance of the forces it was dealing with. This time, it will be lucky to survive. After a century of interstellar flight, mankind was totally unprepared for huge ships which came from depths of space with one intent, obliteration. The Voinian War was a... So basically, there's Voinians and there's a war. I think there's a civil war going on. The story is important. I'm not trying to downplay the story, but I don't know it. Basically, there's these guys here. Let me get a good one here. 
These are the United Earth people. So in the first EV, there was like the rebels and the conf uh, there was the Confederates and the rebels, something like that, which is confusing. And uh, in this one, there's like United Earth, and I forget who the opposition is. And then there's the Voinians, or maybe the Voinians are the opposition. Again, I hope you didn't come here for a background and escape velocity override. If you're even watching this, if anybody watches it. All right. So look at that ship. That's pretty cool. All right. First thing I'm going to do. I'm going to visit the outfit. I'm going to get a regional map. Most people, you know, they might go to the commodity exchange, but you know, I don't know much about that. I'm going to grab some passengers. If I hit the map button, I can go check out where this mission is. Yeah, that seems reasonable. So we'll go there. Yeah, we'll take that. Plotted a course. Oh, look at that guy. That's awesome. I think that guy's my favorite ship. What is it? It's a freighter. Hey man, how you doing? Greetings from a UE trader. Sometimes you'll you'll uh open hailing frequencies with them and they'll they'll have some interesting advice for you. There's a United Earth fighter. You'll be safe as long as you remain in UE space. But the Galactic West are the Voinians, and elsewhere, only rumors. Cool. All right. Uh, what else we got here? These shuttles are pretty jokes, these shuttles we get. <laughs> oh, man, I'm looking forward to seeing these in the files. You can see, they're all just, they all have a very, uh, there must, for each ship, they probably prepared, you know, they're rotating, because you see there's like, uh, there's, you know, there's standard rotation, right? Every ship's got to have that set of sprites. And it doesn't look like they... They flip them, so it's a full 360. And then every ship needs to have a forward-looking, you know, sort of greeting asset. And then I think there's also like a shipyard asset for everything. Yeah, there you go. So they'd also have to do the shipyard asset. So quite a bit of stuff they'd have to prepare for each new ship. In addition to, you know, all the, all the stats for the ship and everything like that. Pretty cool. All right, enough talk. I'm going to head to Aludra. I really feel like games like this are just sort of, there was this sort of special era where there's all these top-down um, shoot-em-up games reminiscent of things like Asteroids, you know, like Maelstrom and stuff, but they were more open world. I guess nothing really reached the level of escape velocity, but there were tons. And on the, on the Windows side, there was also... Um, Oh man, there was that top down. It was like a multiplayer network game though. I forget what it was, but it looks a lot like this. Um, but it had physics, um, you know, gravity and, and acceleration, all sorts of interesting stuff like that. Anyways. Alright, so we made it this far. Uh looks like we got one more stop. After this, we'll we'll head out of e, uh, UE space and we'll see if we can head to somewhere where there might be some bad guys. I think they said to the west was Voinian, so... And look at all these planets, too. The passengers exit your ship after paying the fee of 5,000 credits. These, uh... These sort of planet splash pages. I don't think that's Infinity, though. That looks like Bryce to me. Probably like Bryce 2 or something. It's beautiful, though. I mean, certainly pretty pretty evocative of the period. Let's head back to Earth. Sounds good. And maybe along the way, we can uh, find something else to our fancy. Defiance. Yeah, it was pretty cool. I mean, this is like one of the first sandbox games I probably ever played, and it and it it's not very in depth, but you can actually like take over planets, you know, like you can contact planets and stuff. Hang on, let me see if I can do that. Yeah, there you go. Greetings. You can demand tribute, which will of course piss them off, and you won't be able to land anymore. But if you're strong enough and you pose as threat, they'll actually start scrambling ships to try and take you down and if you destroy all their 
their defense and demand tribute. They'll pay you tribute and it's your planet. You can go hang out there whenever you want. I mean, I don't know of any other perks you get for it. I mean, you get paid, I think, every every set time interval. I don't know what it is, but it's pretty cool. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I did a lot of actual playing of this game. I mostly just cheated and uh, tried my best to play it. Uh, the forklift is, uh, whoop, press caps lock, you can go double speed, which is handy for long distance journeys. Ah, escape velocity, what a classic. All right, I'm going to see if anything takes me further west. Uh, no, this is all east. So let's YOLO our way west and see if we can find anything scary. I think we got a little bit of money now. Uh, let's get another one of these. Yeah. Whoa. No, don't, don't sell it. Alright. I'm not sure it does anything. I probably only have one hard point for it, but, you know, you can outfit your ship, get a whole bunch of upgrades. It's a really great game. I'm sure many people have done coverage of this game better than I could. Um, but it is a classic. Absolutely. I've always loved just the simple nature of it. Um, there's not a lot of hand-holding. There's definitely like a tutorial. You can like meet a person in your first mission and they offer to help you. Oh, we've run out of fuel. Or no, we haven't run out of fuel. But let's land and see if we can get... No. Nope. Eh, let's get a fuel tank. Refuel ship. Alright. Our mission is to go as far west as we can. Oh, something's happening. There it is, a Voinian. Okay, sweet. Yeah, so... Pretty, uh, pretty blocky. I think I know how they probably made this ship. It'll be interesting to see it when we go there. Pretty cool, right? So I like how right off the bat, the United Earth and the Poinians have a distinct design. Like, oh, look at this guy. Let me, let me say, what's up? Stop wasting my time. Can you help me? In your dreams, pal. The Voinians are surprisingly, co you know, um, fluent in our language, despite being aliens. What do you say? What do you say we take on this Voinian cruiser? Come and get me. Come and get me. So yeah, they're scrambling fighters now. Oh, oh, oh. If I'm going down. All right. Sweet game. I've been killed. Let's take a look. Escape velocity override by Mad Birch, of course. The one, the only, the legend. Man, when games like this had single developers. I mean, I guess to even today a game like this would have a single developer. But you look at something like uh, Endless Sky, which is, uh, I think it's open source, but it's it's definitely like a team effort to not recreate Escape Velocity, but make a game much like it. And uh, I, I think it, it definitely achieves that goal. It's a great game. Of course, you know, nothing beats going back to see this. Ah, good on y'all. I hope you're all doing well. Andrew Welch, there he is. Patrick Delahanty, vocal talent? Thaumaturgist. Th Thaumaturgist. I think they're just, I think they're just banging it on now. Finances, marketing, lemon fresh wong. Cool. Hey, how cool would it have been to be one of these folks? Beta testing a legend like Escape Velocity. Pretty cool, man. Alright, very good. So that's Escape Velocity Override, just to give you an idea. Alright, so somebody on the Macintosh Garden posted these up, which is pretty cool. It looks like, let's take a look at the readme here. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Notes on these files, what's here, what isn't, credits, apologies, explanations, reminiscences, and possibly even some useful information. Uh, if you read this, you are a very patient person. Or I guess just somebody with nothing else to do and, you know, an obsession with this stuff. This is not an official Ambrosia release. Ambrosia software can make no promises that the files you have downloaded will not wreck your blah, 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 blah cover my ass. Do not con contact Ambrosia regarding problems. Okay, what have I just downloaded? Let's go. Let's go right there. Jump to that. Hopefully, you have checked this out carefully before you download this file. 
if, whoop, excuse me. Hopefully you've just, you, if you are just an ordinary EVO player, innocent of all knowledge of plugin and 3D ship design, I regret to inform you that what you have just acquired will be of virtually no use to you whatsoever. More likely, however, you know what you're doing and you also know that you now have copies of almost all the original 3D designs used to create the graphics for EV override. Excuse me. This includes the models for planets, stations, ships, weapons, outfit items, and so on. So awesome. They are all infinity format because that's what was used to make them. If anyone knows how to or cares to, take time to convert them to another format, even assuming that's necessary. I'm not familiar with many 3D packages. They're free to distribute them in that format as long as it is distributed as a complete package with this documentation such as it is. Blah, 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 blah. Um, here's something that's interesting. What unusual files are in here and what files that shouldn't be are here, here aren't? Okay, there's an unused and half-completed design for an alternate version of the UE Cruiser in the ships folder. 16 UE Cruiser 2, as an example of how the old designs might be improved and altered without totally changing the basic concept. It's not especially good itself, but then I never got around to finishing it. Also in the ships folder, there's a file called Coke Machine. The story behind this one goes something like this. Chris, my graphics designer, had a design for a Coke machine he wanted me to use somewhere in my scenario. I explained that there really wasn't any obvious or useful place for it to be used, but then had this random idea for a mission involving a mysterious Coke machine drifting through space, which the player would have to investigate for some bemused aliens. This became the strange asteroid mission, which you may be aware of. Unfortunately, I got the model for the Coke machine, but not the image with Coca-Cola on, which was rather vital for the graphic to be useful. So I put a temporary placeholder graphic, left the mission in, and waited for the image to turn up. I'm still waiting. I think he's lost it himself, actually. Anyway, if anyone can put their own Coca-Cola graphic on the design, I put the whole thing into a plugin. I'd be thrilled to see what mission makes sense. I'd be thrilled to see that mission make sense at last, or at least for it to make as little sense as it was meant to make. That's pretty cool. Okay, here's what's missing. The shuttle design is missing the weapon on its nose. Must have mislaid that somewhere. Actually, I was making an unarmed version and forgot to save as. I can't get my backups right now. Oh, that's too bad. So. They're saying the shuttle in the game has a, a mounted weapon on the front of it, and this one does not. Some of the fighter carrying ship designs include their fighters in the file at an appropriate scale for use in the shipyard graphic, and some don't. If I was more organized, there'd be two versions of each, one with and one without. Okay, enough reading of a text thing. So basically, they're saying that these files are mostly in situ as they were at the point of development of the game. So, you know, they... It's a small studio. In fact, in this case, I think it was still just one guy, right? Uh, Matthew Birch or whoever whoever was the, the head designer. And uh, they were clearly, you know, as they were going along, just uh, editing the files and not saving them properly. Oh, this is pretty interesting. Pick to sprites. Use the 3D program of your choice to create a 36 frame, picks format, Im animation of your ship or weapon, spinning clockwise, starting out facing straight up. Be sure to force your 3D program to save each frame separately, blah, blah, blah. So this looks like a program that was developed by Ambrosia to create their sprites. Let's see here. Um, I would love to get an about for that, but it looks like you need to have the appropriate stuff ready to use it. Okay. All right, so let's, um, let's start. What are spogs? Planets, stations, moons. All right. I really like the stations in this game. I would love to see what a station looks like. Let me boot up Infinity here and take a look at this. Haven't used Infinity in a couple months now, it feels like. I come back to it every once in a while. All right. Spobs. Stations, planets, orbiting bodies, I guess. Makes sense. All right, let's go with the Voinian station. I'm I'm kind of a fan of these Voinian things. All right, let's see here. Bits and pieces. Here we go. Start. Usually we just call those textures, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Look at how big that window is. It makes sense. It makes sense. I guess yeah. So they were they wanted to see what it looked like and preview it. And you know, uh 
Wow, when was inf when was override made? When was override made? Hang on, one sec. I want to see something here. Nineteen ninety eight. Okay. Yeah, they would have had screens, you know, about this big. Anyways, let's take a render of this. <laughs> okay, so this is how you usually saw these um these assets. So what I want to do is take them and bump them right up. Let's make um uh, 760, yeah, 600 pixels. All right. The bigger than you've ever seen it. Here it is, the Voinian station. Oh man. Look at that. I tell you, the lower resolution really does do you favors for hiding your crimes with these 3D models. But as a connoisseur of infinity models, well, it's not bad. It's pretty cool. I'll tell you one thing. I could have worked for Ambrosia. I could have made models. These were about the quality of my models in 1998. I guess that's comforting to know because you know, games like Infinity, sorry, games like Escape Velocity were definitely inspiring to me, you know, getting into 3D modeling and, and graphics. And uh, this is pretty cool. I mean, it's very simple. Let's go right in there, see what we can see. Let's, re let's really fine tooth comb this design here. All right, we're going to get right in. Let's see what, what's going on here. I'm going to switch to Fong just to... Uh-huh. Okay, so yeah, it's just a bunch of simple... Um, whatever they call these lathe shapes. Do they call these lathes? I always forget. What do you call this? Let's take a look. Did they even name it? Central section. Oh, sweet. They named everything. Bottom thing. Bay parent, strut, thing one, thing two, thing three, thing four. I love it. I love the tool marks like this. When you can see, it's like they're reaching out to us from the past. I don't know what to call this thing. I love it. What is thing one? That's thing one. These are, if you were ever wondering what the Voinians, you know, called these elements on their, their uh, space stations, it's its technical name is a thing. Um, and there are uh, roughly six things on every Voinian space station. So, all right, let's move on. Let's see what else we got here. I'm going to go back to Spobs. This time I want to see UE station with the twin docking ring. And let's bump this up to 600 again. I'm loving this. Man, I wish I had known about this back in the day. All right. Very, very different design language going on here, obviously. Much more round. A lot of torus at play here. We got some more sweeps, some more lathe shapes. Um, we got some accent stuff going on. I'm loving these. These little <laughs> windows. I did the same thing on my spaceships in Infinity because I never got the hang of texturing, right? And it's so crucial to uh, for any kind of window or, you know, um, I mean, anytime you're going to try and put a window on a space station, you, you want to do it as a texture, but, you know, nobody had, I mean, everybody had access to Photoshop, but it was just way easier to do it this way. So you'd put an object as a physical thing that would supposed to be the window but it would project proud of the, the the face of the object you were putting it in and cast a shadow and i guess at the scale that they were rendering at it really didn't matter you know it, it was fine um it's still pretty interesting to see though no i like that that's again a really interesting little detail and again i always like to go in and see how they did it we got the center section again which is is yeah okay it's a uh all these let me just make one so i know what they call it 
a glass, right? A glass. So yeah, it's it's a it's a profile that's swept around a, a circle. And toruses are are the same, really. They're just a circle, swept around a circle. Okay, not much going on there. Pretty cool though. I, you know, I like those. I like the the ships and stuff. It looks like the texture they're going for here is this just a standard infinity texture they were using? No, they made their own. It's got some corrosion, not nearly as as pronounced as the one on the Voinian stuff. That's cool. All right, what else we got? Moranu Station. Okay, right. There's these other species, the Moranu or something like that. Miranu. Again, there's an, there's a whole EV wiki for, for the true deets. I don't know what I'm talking about. I just wanted to see this. Wow. Well, that's very interesting. I don't know what they were going for there. That looks like some sort of serving bowl or an ashtray or an oil lamp or something. Uh, okay. Very cool. Very cool. Definitely. Um, oh, look at that. Look at that inner profile. You don't see much of it. So it's interesting that they would have taken the time to do that. But again, this was all by the seat of their pants. They were just making stuff. There's a window. Oh, those are supposed to be like a line of windows, I guess. Okay. I'm getting some really strong, um, Bab you know, Babylon 5 sort of influences there. Wow. I remember this. Okay. I'm looking forward to seeing this. Interesting that this one's at a much higher resolution. Huh. Wow. Far more innate. And look at this curve that's going on here. Wow. It's like, um, it, it, it's more like a crown. It's very delicate and, wow, I really like this. I had forgot that they're, so yeah, I believe the Miranu and the Crescent are these two different races that you find um, on the edge of the galaxy. And they have um, very, you know, very distinct shapes for their ships. N nothing like the Boinian or the UE. And that's clear here. I'm loving the interplay of blue and purple and these like internal sort of crystalline faces. Look, there's there's even there's even some like tessellation going on back here. Compared to the complexity of the other shit, you know, the other bases and not just the other bases we've seen. This is a whole other level. So cool. There, I mean, it, you know, it's all repeating, so there's not much to it. You just sort of duplicate it and rotate it along a path, you know, rotate it around a central thing, I guess. Um, still really interesting. I love it. I love it. I wouldn't have gone for such a bland texture for the, you know, the portions that are sort of generic white, but that's still really beautiful. Wow. I, I want this to finish rendering so I can go in and explore, but I want, I just want to take in the whole rendering here. Jeez, oh, is that, I wonder if that's a shadow or that's an object. Wow. That is really cool. You know, it's, it's, it's silly as like a space station, but whatever, it's still really neat. Let's go take a closer look inside here. Yeah, it's a whole bunch of triangles sort of arranged around. And are these all extrusion shapes? Yeah, they're all just simple triangles. What's this? Okay, that's like another sweep or, um, you know, glass shape. This is an extrusion with a beveled edge. I mean, this is, 
This is pretty classic for, you know, 3D modeling of the time, at least with this kind of package. Like I know people in uh, Form Z and probably Cinema 4D and all the programs that were out at this time, 3ds Max, they had a much more robust, probably subdivision modeling, or I don't know what it was then, way of modeling. But in Infinity, you were really, you know, bound by these simple sort of uh, functional shapes that you get, you know, up here. You got your sweeps and your your toruses and your extrusions and your all these different sort of they're they're all just plays on basic polygonal shapes and, and it doesn't get it's kind of parametric and it and it never really gets destructive you can never really i mean you can like i can convert something to a mesh and edit it yeah see ray i'll convert it to a mesh but then you know good luck i mean you're gonna come in here and you're gonna move it's not like you know, it's not like you're used to. Anyways, don't want to do that. Okay, cool. That one's very cool too. Let's move on. I think that does it for all the the bases. I didn't look at this one. Yeah, pretty standard. Interesting how they have it at the front here and the side. Oh, you know what I forgot to do with that last one? I just want to take a real quick look at the names for stuff. Oh, it's so many objects. I have to go to this pop-out panel. Crystal. Okay. It's just crystals and prisms. Very good. Very good. Appreciate ya. Whoever worked on that model, you know, as somebody who farts around in infinity and knows how cumbersome it is to work with lots of objects in it. And there's not much to that model. I'm not saying it's like amazing. I just, I appreciate the time and attention that went into it. That's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, it was one of the more, it was definitely one of the more memorable assets in the game. I did remember that that station for sure. And I haven't played EV Override in ages. Uh, yeah, okay. So it's basically the other space station with one docking ring. Very good. All right. Let's go now to just the planets for a mo Oh, man. Look at all these different kinds of planets. I want to see the ring planet. What's going on here? That doesn't look ringed. Are there other cameras? Hmm. All right, well, that's kind of boring. I always wondered how they did Earth. Is that an M-class planet? It is, it looks like. Nice. Eh, I don't know. Is that Earth? Planetoid. And how'd they do it? Ah, it's just a marble. Marble effect. Yeah, with the cohesion turned way down. Yeah. Fascinating. And with some reflectiveness. Well, I guess that wouldn't matter in a black scene. Let me go through here. I just want to see if we have any other... What is W? Yeah, cool. So it's just a marble texture. This is a classic of uh, retro CG, this marble effect. I have no idea what you call this algorithm or this, like... Uh, process but it seems like it's everywhere back in the day you know this if you ever seen reboot incoming game you know like come on warning incoming game you know so that's pretty cool all right i've had it up to here with planets let's see what else we got moons all right give me a g moon yep just as you'd expect Again, another marble texture with the cohesion turned way up and a lot of turbulence, I'm guessing. Let's take a look. Yep. Yeah, uh, not way up, but up enough. Cool. All right, very good. Very good. I'm, I'm guessing we're not going to see much texturing and all this stuff or complex shapes or anything like that. Uh, let's quickly run through some weapons. We don't need to see all of them. Man, I wish the forklift was in here. Was there a forklift in EV Override? There must have been. Uh, what was my favorite? Well, let's take a look at the space mine. I remember that being kind of neat. Neat. Okay, so you got... This must be like their ship or the, the outfitter's view. And then this might be like top-down view for when you shoot it. Because you definitely do see them in space. Neat. What's going on here? Any objects? Yeah, just some cubes and some prisms. I guess they call these shapes prisms, right? So you get a bunch of cross sections and a, sorry, you get a cross section or a, a, a central like, and look at me talking like I know, 
I've been using this program for like 20 years. I, I still don't know how to use these. You can play around with them until you get the shape you want, though. Amalga shell. What's this? Oh, that's interesting. I don't remember this. Look at that. That's like a full-on cartridge. Interesting. Me, personally, I would have made this top part a separate object and would have given it a different sort of hue, but whatever. I don't remember that. That must be some, like, end game something. A blaze. So that's just the bolt that comes out of your gun. <laughs> I guess that was the easiest way to make it. They just, they just literally made a, rect a cube and stretched it. And if you ever wanted to know what the color of... Uh, uh, you know, the, the blaze was, it's 85% red. There you go. Uh, what's a sad module? Oh, neat. These were like those, um, things that would like fly around. Oh, interesting. This one's actually chewing up some CPU. A little bit of refraction going on there. Very nice. Adds a nice little effect. Yeah, I remember liking these weapons. I thought they looked like photon torpedoes from Star Trek. So I always enjoyed them. And I, if I recall, these are like anti-missile. They're like countermeasures or something. I'm not going to sit through this whole thing. Let's open up a new one. Sad and say... Side and side. Yeah, same difference. Just kind of greeny. Okay. What else do we have here? I mean, I could go through all of these, but... What the hell? We'll go through all of them. What the hell? All right, here's your defense pod. Can't really make out what it is. Oh, that's very cool. Let's boost that up. Let's see that. It's a very simple effect, but I like it. You know, it's a nice shiny outer green sphere and a brighter inner sphere, I'm guessing. No, it's just one sphere. How'd they do that? Is there something inside? Ah, uh, okay, there's a light source inside. Right, okay, with some glow. Yeah, I like that. It's simple and it, you know, I remember that being kind of interesting looking. Dispy Rocket. Is that a dispersal rocket? Either way, it's a very simple design. Looks a lot like that shell we saw earlier. Probably a glass that's been, you know. Ooh, you can tell they didn't center the fins. Oh, that bugs me. That bugs me. They either didn't center the fin, yeah, along the exit centered. Or they didn't center this. Why isn't this working? Or am I wrong? Am I just out to lunch here? Let's take a look from the top. Oh, it looks centered. Yeah. Whoa. What's going on there? I think I'm just I think I'm just seeing things. Yeah, it's fine. Anyways, look at me trying to get smug. This is pretty cool. I like the little the little ring here. I know. I, it's like you start to deconstruct this stuff and it's like you're giving points for <laughs> it's like a giant participation trophy. But I really like that little red ring on the front because everything else is so simple and that little change adds so much to it. You know, not change that little detail. Uh, we already did the, this one. Flamethrower. I don't recall this one at all. This might... Oh, okay. So it's just... Yeah, it's just a blast of flame. How'd they do this? Is this a texture? It is. So then, why not just use the texture? Why make a 3D model of it? Oh, I bet I know why. Yep. It had an animation associated with it. How cool is that? Did the others... Does this have an animation associated with it? 
Yeah, it definitely had a timeline. Yeah, and it has a change. The light does something. What do you think the light does? Let's take a look. It's not its intensity. Oh, its intensity falls off over time. Cool. Okay. So I guess these all have some animation. Neutron. Oh, these are the neutron blasts. These are cool. That's all it is? <laughs> I love that. It's just some noise and a bump. Noise is also a popular one for sure. That is awesome. <laughs> and look, it also does something. Let us switch to wireframe. And wireframe. And what does it do? All right, so it's just, yeah, it was cre to create the sprites. Why did I ha they have it rotate twice? Once. That's all you need. So strange. I guess they just do it and then take the frames they needed. They wouldn't worry about doing it in infinity. Pursuit missile. Oh, yeah. I always like these. <laughs> I like this, too. This little inner, you know, inner uh, uh, plume or whatever you call it. The outer plume here. How'd they do that? Are they two separate objects? Flame one, yes they are, and flame two. Let me guess, flame one, little bit of transparency, a lot of transparency, flat color, okay. Flame two, some glow? We got some glow in there? We do have some glow, yep, that's why. Yep, pretty cool. All right. Let's keep going through here. I hope I didn't miss any. I think I did. What's this? H-missile. And this one also has an animation, you know, sort of defined for it. It's just rotating, though. They use that pick to sprite to do it. Very cool. So that's what it would look like top down. Ooh, I don't like that. What's going on there? Cruiser by, oh, it's this corrosion. So Infinity also has this corrosion mapping thing. I don't like it. I don't think it looks particularly good. I don't see how that's corrosion. It always looks to me like it's some sort of like diamond plating or something. And I, it works. I mean, it works for the Voinian stuff. I'm not saying they shouldn't have used it. I just like, I'm not a, not a huge fan. They're not going to get any participation awards from me for that. So this was the, what was this? This was the H missile. So then there's the needle missile. Okay. Zoom out a bit here. Okay, not much to this one. Nothing really exciting. Again, they got their two flames thing, which I really love. Really love. Whoop, 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 whoop. Okay, I'm breaking it out of here. And needle missile, neutron, we saw phaser. Is this like phase? Oh, that's a phase cannon or something. Again, just a little. Just a little droplet. It's probably a glass. Yeah, it's just a glass. And uh, texture's probably pretty simple. Glow. Again, not a lot of... Sorry, it's not a texture. It's a, ma it's a material. What do they call it? Do they call it a material? Surface. It's a surface. Well, I would have defined the surface as the physical surface, but whatever. Uh, pursuit missile we saw. I'm pretty sure. Let's double check. Yeah, we saw pursuit missile. I guess they're just super fast. Uh, rocket, did we see? And this is pretty standard. Rocket. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to zoom out a bit. Yep, very, very good. Of course, corrosion. We got some noise maybe in there. And your standard red fins. Me, personally, uh, you know, it's such a it's such a simple thing. And they've already done it on other models to add a little bevel in there. And then you might get some light reflecting off the edges of it a little bit. Adds a little bit of dimension to it. That's what I would have done. Anyways, Ambrosia didn't ask me. And I was like 98. I was like young, too young to work on this shit anyways. Anyways, okay. We're here. We're going to focus on what we came here to see now. I'm, I don't know if I'm going to get through all of them. Look how many there are. Before we start, though, I'd like to look at the ones that the text file said were interesting or were not part of the game. Kind of an interesting amusement. So, coke.picked. 
He said it was missing. And as you can see, it's still missing here. Still waiting on it. So in its place, we're going to use flame. So this is what was supposed to be the asteroid floating around that you were supposed to, you know, find for those aliens. And it would have had a big Coke logo on the front. It would have been obvious that it was a vending machine. It doesn't have a bottom dispenser. Where do you get your Cokes from, bro? Where do you get your Cokes from? Watch this. Directive Zero fixes Infinity Override. Here we go. Here we go. Put that like that. Go like that, you know. We'll stretch it out a little bit. And we'll go like this. And uh, bring it out this way. Probably right about meow. And uh, I kind of forget how booleans work in this, but it should be a negative. And I think I've got a, I think I got a parrot to this. So now there should be an opening at the bottom of it. I think. A. Look at that. Such a small change makes such a big detail. Anyways, doesn't matter. There's no animation for this, which is surprising. Because if it was supposed to be floating out in space, shouldn't it be like tumbling? Like the truck in the Voyager episode. I forget. Is it the 8018 or something like that? Is it Amelia Earhart? I don't know. All I know is they find uh, a floating truck in space for no reason. I never explain why it's out there. Okay, and the next one was there is a UE carrier cruiser Mark II. All right, I want to see this. Well, actually, first, first off, blah, 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 don't worry about that. Let's see the standard UE cruiser. All right, here it is in all its glory. I'm going to go to the main camera here. This looks like it's rotating camera. Yeah, so that's where they would... They would get a nice view of it, and then they would do a nice rotation. You know, I bet you they, I bet you they do it like this because there's like a linear spool up speed, right? like slowly. It doesn't immediately start at the right velocity. Maybe it does. I don't know. That can be a problem I've noticed with things where I want to loop them. Is like if the animation is linear, um, then it loops wild. But if it if it's you know if it ramps up and down if it's a smooth um, acceleration curve if things don't loop properly so maybe they they had to do that I don't know all right so here we are UE cruiser right off the bat pretty sweet right you got this mean looking forward pointing blades you got a whole row of I'm guessing those are you know portholes you got your forward command deck and then aft you have your turrets, which are a special kind of turret. I guess we'll see those in the outfits. Well, those were just the, the weapons we saw, so I guess outfits will be separate. What do they call these? Fins. Main section is called the body. I actually went through and, and named most of this. Screen. These are all individual. Portholes. Turret. Turret. All right, let's go to the other camera and get a good look at this bad boy. Um, and I'm going to create, just for my own sanity, I'm going to create one of these. There we go. So now we can orbit around this guy. All right. And we're going to see the, I want to see the underground. We're going to go with Fong. Mm, that takes a little too long. We'll go with flat. Still takes a little long, but here we go. All right, so here is the UE Cruiser in all its glory. And if you've ever wondered what the underside of the UE Cruiser looks like, well, now you know. There is a turret underneath there. There was always a turret underneath there. I guess you see it in the forward-looking view when you're, like, talking to them on the radio. Here? No, you don't. You wouldn't have seen it. Yes, you do. You see it. Okay, so no great revelation there. But this is pretty cool. You could use this now to make a sweet splash screen for your own EV override mod. That'd be pretty cool. 
And it has portholes on the bottom as well. That's neat. Yeah, two rows of por portholes. And a star-shaped fin arrangement. That's kind of neat. All right, so that's the UE Cruiser that was. Let's take a look at the UE Cruiser that wasn't. Never made it into the game. Okay, I'm going to go to this view. Wow, look at that right off the bat. You can tell it's something special. So, wow. <laughs> wow. That is quite different from the initial design, isn't it? Okay. Gone is the bulky center structure, and in its place is this ring truss object with these pylons that come off for these turrets. It's got turret pylons, uh, main hall turrets, and then this truss structure supports the fins. I'm not sure what the fins are for. I'm guessing they're like solar panels, or maybe they're just to look mean. Look at that. Bridge one, bridge two. Let's get right in there. I'm going to get right in there. This is what it would look like if you were doing an EVA outside of the ship and you had to repair some hull plating. This is a much more interesting design. And look, the turrets are different too. I guess those are, I seem to recall those being a turret in the game though. I guess those are those, um, ah, I forget. I already forget. We looked at them earlier. This is pretty cool though. I'm gonna close this and go to a top down view. I wanna see if they actually did the animation for it yet. No, they didn't. They were still working on it. Look at that. How cool is that? Wow. There is a lot of stuff going on in this file. You can appreciate that they probably didn't want to do this for every ship and like go through all of this upgrading stuff to try and make it look fresh and, and different from the original one. I mean, not the original one. I mean, they were just trying to upgrade a, a design from the game. Like, this isn't a ship from the original Escape Velocity, so I'm not sure why they felt it necessary to go to these lengths. I guess this was supposed to be, like, a really, really high-end version. I gotta say, though, I really love the truss structure, this 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 webbing of, of metal support stuff. Super rad. I think... I think I want to take a look at this back engine here, though. It looks like it has some interesting engine philosophy going on here, which I, I think bears further um, uh, investigation would be the word I'm looking for. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna drop another one of these. That didn't work. Man, I can't I can't tell you how much smoother this computer is behaving since I turned off those annoying extensions. I don't want to see right up her skirt. What's going on here? What secrets have you? Not much. I, I thought there'd be more to it, but I guess you wouldn't see much from the top, so there's really no point. It's clearly supposed to be some sort of veins for the engine, which I do appreciate. And I like that they constantly use this motif of these triangles with these accent pieces. This looks very Voinian to me, 
which I wonder if it's supposed to suggest that they've, you know, integrated some stolen Voinian technology here. I don't know. Let's take a look at some other stuff, you know, now that we've seen some UE stuff. I think that's really... I want to see the UE carrier before I go, because this one's big too. Yeah. Uh, I think these were probably not made with Infinity 4.5, and so there may be some, like, they're not bringing them in as files, they're opening them as new files. So I'm thinking there's, you know, something, something wrong with the, uh, the cameras, they're not, they're not target cameras, so you can't orbit around stuff. Wow, I don't recall it having this shape. Oh, yeah. Well, that's super interesting. Okay. Yep, pretty standard UE design. Uh, you know, you got your your gray tubes with your portholes and your red fins, and there's clearly some sort of landing bay in there. Cool. And, uh, you know, I probably had animation. Yep keyed up so that they could do their little spinny spin. Very cool. What else we got here? Okay, let's see what a Voinian cruiser looks like. We'll, we'll do the cruisers. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get to everything. This is the ship that took me down in my playthrough earlier, so now I get to... Now I got my revenge. I get to pick it apart. I'm going to add one of these because I don't want to do it from here. All right. Do the whole thing here, and we'll go with flat. There's probably not a lot to this guy. Wow. I got to say, he looks pretty mean from uh, this angle. I would not want to encounter this guy. Wow. I definitely want to take some of these assets and do my own ship battle scene with them. You know, like perfectly legit. Wow, you did a really good job recreating the ships from EV. Oh no, those are the ships from EV. All right, this one's chewing through. I guess these are supposed to be hangar bays, which is smart, or they're supposed to be windows. I don't know. And again, you've got your, your, you know, your your crystal shards, your your triangular shardy shard things, and uh, your your V's, your red V's, consummate V's. And yeah, that's really all there is to this guy. It uh, it lacks, like it doesn't even have windows. I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of the Voinian design language. I got to be honest. There's really not much to it, is there? It just sort of is. Um, let's see if there's any cool names for stuff. Yeah, no, they don't even bother. It's just kind of feels like an afterthought, to be honest. You know, like they were like, well, we can just make them these really brutalist shapes because... They are aliens. And, uh, uh, yeah, I guess they're a major enemy. Like, they're through most of the game. So you want to keep that really fun stuff, like the uh, the Crescent, till the end. Okay. And we'll see some of those. All right, so that was the Voinian cruiser. And, you know, there's the Voinian. We'll, well, let's take a look at the frigate and the fighter real quick. Yep, there's the frigate in all its glory. Let's take a look at it in Fong. Yeah. All right. Kind of boring, got to say. But what can you do? They needed to pump out assets. What are they going to do? Sit here all day in infinity, pumping out crazy high detail models that no one's ever going to appreciate. Ooh. All right. Okay, we did the cruiser. Let's take a look at the scout ship. Number nine. Yeah, this guy's not so great, as I recall. This is like sort of... This is sort of like... A fancy ship. It's like the Razorback, you know, from uh, the Expanse. It's just sort of like a 
bit of a showboat. I really don't like the texture they used for it. I mean, I get it, but it looks like um, folded steel or, or something like that. But I don't think it works. Uh, it does not. Yeah, whatever. I love these turbine engines, though, in space with these giant intakes in space. But, I mean, they land, so maybe it's like an air-breathing engine, but also like a space engine. Does it have a... Let's see here. Let's step through the animation. <laughs> that didn't work, did it? Mmm, nothing there. Okay. Okay, that was nine. Ten. Freight courier. Did they spell that right? This guy's pretty cool, eh? Oop. I guess if I have to choose between the marble or the corrosion texture, I definitely like the corrosion more. It does look, yeah, it does look like corroded metal in this instance, and you can see it as sort of a pitted surface. Um, this is cool. This kind of, uh, this feels more like a, like an armored personnel carrier to me with this big dome sort of centerpiece. Uh, let's see here, Voinian Dreadnought. This guy's like a big boy, right? He's like big bad boy. <laughs> wow, Star, Star Destroyer match? Now recall if you see this guy, you're, you're in for a bad time. Oh, that's cool. I like that it has legit hangar bays, though. Sticking out like that. This is actually really neat compared to the other ones. They've clearly done a lot of work to try and add scale to it and make it look bigger than the other ships. I appreciate that. That is really neat. And it does look kind of chonky, this big command structure at the front. Yeah, again, like no points for it being a triangle, though. It looks like a Star Destroyer, but not bad, not bad. Let's see what the interceptor looks like. I wonder if there's a Kess uh what is the ship um Oh man, I can't remember the name. You're if if you're watching this and you know EV, you probably know exactly. A Kessel a Kessler? A Kestrel. Right? And it was like the be all and end all ship of EV. My friends and I used to like trade legends of how they got the Kestrel in Escape Velocity. Yeah, this one's pretty ho-hum. There's like a red thing in there, but it never shows up. I wonder what that's all about. I wonder if it was supposed to, and they just never got around to fixing it. Yeah, I wonder if that's how it was supposed to look. I think it's good they changed it. It doesn't look good. But anyways. Alright, that was the interceptor. Now we got the crate. This is interesting. I think this is the the Miranu people. And their ships are, are like cool stuff like this. I like this. Again, it's got the weird intakes, but got that nice bulbous <laughs> canopy <laughs> all of my spaceships <laughs> look like this right here i wonder if i have one ah it doesn't matter um take a look at the back here yeah not much to look at there Let's see the turncoat 
Oh, this guy. I think these are the... No, this is the Crescent, right? This is the Crescent, these guys. Let's go with Fong on this one. Uh, shadows, please. Yeah, I want those nice scallop shadows. Ooh, that looks bad. <laughs> Not calculating those properly. Interesting, interesting. Uh, I don't want to ray trace the whole thing. Yep, they seem to like those big overarching intakes, D shaped intakes, and whatever. I guess they pipe in the hydrogen from space into the engine, which doesn't exist, doesn't have an engine. Or no engine bell, anyways. The Helion. Yeah, more Crescent stuff, I guess. They love it. They love it. Okay. UE Cruiser and UE Cruiser 2 we saw. So now we get into the Maranu stuff. Yeah, and their stuff's, yeah, purple and yellow. And like saucers, lots of, oh, I like this already. Look at this. I want to take a look at this shape. Fascinating. Very cool. Show me what you got. Very cool. Um, it's a it's a swept shape, so the higher resolution you render it at, the um, the better the curve will be. The curve is calculated, I think, at render time. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Yeah, it looks like I'm wrong. Whoop! Didn't mean to do that. Huh. Same as world. High. There you go. All right, if you set it to high, it does it. They could, probably could have done that. I don't know what it looks like in the game. I know, we never encountered them, but. And then you got your freighters. Ooh, they're, the Marinu freighters are interesting. I wonder if somebody else did the Marinu stuff because it's very unique. And seems to have a bit of a different sort of design sensibility <laughs> I love these sweeping pylons for nothing and just the right amount of asymmetry right like it's nice and gentle that it doesn't totally throw off the rest of the design but it it does you know it's not perfect I'm not saying it's perfect but it's great Yeah, pretty cool. And again, just your simple marble texture, surface, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Marinu Freighter 2. Ah, interesting. This one's blue. I just want to see this one and then just going to run through them quickly now because uh, I've been on here for a while and I'm, i got to go do some other stuff. Super cool. Man, I never thought I'd get to see these ships in such high res. Uh, then we got uh, Crescent Fighter. Or the Crescent, yeah. You know, I, I got to play the game again to really get a feel for what everything is. Okay. 
Yep, pretty standard there. I like these little these little wisps, these little whisker um, control decks. Fighter parent. Yeah. Arada. Neat. Yeah, let me see a bunch of these too. These feel very first season Star Trek The Next Generation to me. Just generic alien of the week spaceship. Crescent Warship. Oh, nice. And this is what they were talking about. Some of the ships had their fighters present because they were showing them off in the uh, the ship, uh, you know, sort of the shipyard's store pages. So this one clearly has fighters present. We're in for a bit of a treat here. And look at all of these, like, basalt columns coming off it. It's like crystals are growing out of it. <laughs> Super cool. And again, would have been such a pain to put together. Man, there's a lot going on in this one. Certainly taking a lot longer to render. But, you know, I think it's worth it. I really like how they're sort of implying that this ship has like a living crystal, no, not living, but like a growing crystal, like a uh, substructure uh, that runs throughout the length of the ship. It's pretty cool. So it's got a top section and a bottom section. Once this is done rendering, I'd love to see how they did it. I mean, I know how they did the, the crystals, but it really didn't read to me uh, in the game that that was what was going on until I see it here. And that's actually pretty compelling. I, th I think that's a cool idea. course it's not immediately clear to me how you would grow crystals in space i thought like crystals needed like a saturated you know substrate or solution to accumulate but you know it's probably space crystals what do i know there you go and that's the final bit right there that's kind of neat i think that's a neat design i have no idea how that's supposed to work but that's cool with me and how does this thing here work so that's that's one piece, and then this is all just separate pieces here. What's that? Pyramid one. Can I edit that object? All right, so that's the top hunk here. Or no, inside. Inside it's the top hunk, and then this part here. Hey, does this have animation data now? <laughs> Clearly, it was not made for that. <laughs> okay, that's cool. I'm just going to do a couple more here, I think. Where was I? That was... Oh my gosh. That was the Arata Crescent Warship. I think that's a Crescent Warship. Zidara. Okay. I'm just going to do these as, as a Fong, and we're going to do them quick. Again, yeah, more crystals. 
I never really picked up on that being like a major design element of these ships, but it's pretty cool. I dig it. Again, it's just a bunch of primitives mashed together, right? So there's only so much you can do, and and I I I commend the creativity of you know trying to add those details. I can't get over that Voinian battleship though, how they how they added scale to it. That's the first time I've ever seen anybody do that in an Infinity thing. Uh, other than like really nice pieces by people, like nothing approaching the level, you know, everything above where I was as like a hobbyist um, did way more interesting stuff. But most of the time they weren't using Infinity. They were using like real production 3D software packages, you know. Uh, what was that? That was the Z Zadara. So this is the Azdara. Oh, interesting. Yikes. Okay. Not a huge fan of this. Um, You know, I know there's a lot of controversy these days in science fiction, mostly Star Trek, about floating, uh, you know, ship elements. And I don't hate it. Uh, I don't mind that these things are floating. I would have liked to have seen something on either end to indicate that it's like, you know, held in place by some sort of like field or magnetic confinement, whatever. I really just don't like the color scheme. Anyways. That's my that's my critique on that one. Uh, that was the wait, what was the Azdra twenty six and forty four the Igazra, Igazra. Whoa, whoa. All right. Despite the overwhelming phallic nature of this one, which I will not get in, not get into. <laughs> it's a love ship. The love ship. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Don't know what to say about this one. Let's, uh, let's go for a, let's, let's, let's fong that wong. <laughs> fong shade the dong. Okay, cool, cool. What's going on here? There's like all this roughness, I guess, to imply sort of like a fieriness. Yeah, I don't know what they were going for with this one. I'm not sure they hit it, though. You know, I'm not sure <laughs> they uh they managed. It's cool. What's going on with these? Oh, it's a terrain object. Oh, that's cool. That's a smart idea. So they they wanted to add some sort of you know detailing to it. Can I zoom in on that? So they they took terrain objects, which are these. So they're just like a grid plane, right? You drop, a, you drop it down Whoop. and then you can either bring in like a height map or, you know, they have a whole bunch of stuff here and you can do whatever you want. Um, for these, it is a terrain object with noise at 26% and they just, you know, they've just popped them on there to create some, some detail. That's pretty cool. All right, that was the uh, Azdgara Arada. So now it's the Zid Zidagar fighter. Oh, what am I doing? I don't have time for that. Just following it. Yeah, I don't have my render farm running. Otherwise, well, even then, you'd have to set it to render. It doesn't render in preview using the render farm. Okay, yeah, I feel like we've seen this all before and yep yeah, it's cool all right that was the zidagar now the amaga fighter amaga fighter freighter that's a freighter or freighter wow this guy looks mean wow Yeah, this is cool. I don't hate this. Um, I don't really like the wood grain they use for this. That's like a wood grain. Yeah, it's like a wood process, right? I get it. Again, you know, you're trying to make some sort of um, exotic material. <laughs> Look at this. It's just bristling. I love the spike collar. That is... <laughs> this looks like something out of Warhammer. Yeah, that's awesome. Let me see if there's any more of those. So that was the 
a Maga fighter. Let's see the freighter. Is it as mean looking? Interesting. Okay, I want to get a good close-in shot of this one. This one looks like it has some meat on its bones. Interesting that they were doing everything in flat. Even the, um, you know, usually you'd keep top, left, and, uh, you know, th these standard views. You do them just as wireframe, and then, you know, you might make your camera or something. Uh, flat shading or whatever. So you could see what you were doing, but. Alright, let's take a look at this guy. Wow. Huh. Wow. Now this is this might be the most detailed one. It's cheating, right? Cuz these are all these are all just extrusions. Like they've been cookie cuttered out. They're all just like shapes. And then you know, you pass something through the middle of them for the main body. It's cool though. I I think it's really neat. I hate the color scheme, but uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Wow. It's kind of got a um, space nineteen ninety nine eagle kind of vibe to it. I guess maybe I'm the only one that feels that way. I feel like this front flight deck here. Is evocative of that. And these little like pile, these nacelles, whatever these are. <laughs> it's interesting. I don't know if I really like this whole vibe. Kind of makes it feel like, I feel like if it was like gingerbread colored, it would, it would look like some sort of Christmas ship. I don't know why. It's just like shortbread cookies to me or something. Okay. That's cool. Not as cool as the last fighter with the, the spike collar. I really like that. Maranu gunship. We're getting close to the end here. Let's do this one. Oops. Let me just do this. Yeah. Pretty con, you know, pretty par for the course. I feel like we've seen that one already. Uh, Igadzra Arada. Didn't we just see this one? Yeah, this is pretty standard, but I'll, I'll show it. There you go. And just a few more left. Zacket. Wow. <laughs> I mean, far be it for me to criticize palette swapping, but this is, I mean, it's not just palette swapping. I mean, there's some changes here. It's cool. I like that, that, that fade on that. What's going on? Is that a special color? Light blue crystals. That's neat. I like it. It's got that retro wave vibe to it zacket fighter uh-huh yeah didn't we see this already yeah cool doesn't look like we're gonna get to see a kestrel somebody closed all the windows before they saved Wow. Eh, I thought that would be more interesting than it was. Cool, cool. And I think this is our last one. This is the good old cargo transporter. You know it. You love it. Backbone of our nation. Good old cargo transporter. And so I'm going to let that one render ray traced. And then we might look at one more, one or two more outfits. And then I am out of here because I've been on here wasting everybody's time for an hour and a half. Not that anybody's watching, but that's okay. Yeah, pretty standard, par for the course. Bunch of uh, 
Um, well, cylinders with rounded edges. I wonder how they did that. It's pretty impressive. It must be a lathe shape, a glass shape, and a turret. Neat. Here's something interesting about these guys that I noticed. When they rotate, the solar panel stays locked, which is pretty sweet, right? It's smart. I always like that about the game, that they, you know, so that it's always oriented towards the quote-unquote sun, even though, you know, you never see the sun in EV. Very cool. All right, one, uh, let's take a look at the outfits. Is there a map? No, we looked at those. We looked at all those. What is the bay template? Yeah, that's fine. Oh. <laughs> well, that's not very interesting. Yeah, it's just a hole in a wall. Okay. CV Bay. Oh, this is cool. Warning, reduce speed now. <laughs> That's pretty rad. I am very surprised it doesn't use booleans for this. But I guess they didn't have booleans in Infinity, whatever. Mine layer, needle launcher, phase turret, solar phasers. Phase turret. ECM system. This is cool. It's just a... It's supposed to look like a computer, I guess. Nee, 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 nee. Oh, cool. Guidance 15, SAE, module jammed. Look at that. That's really neat. <laughs> What else we got? Uh, bay template. I'm just picking and choosing now. I, I might miss something. Ah, uh, sure. Give me the Amalga Cannon so I can see what these, these jokers shoot. Of course it's going to be something junk. Ah, yeah. That's the thing we see on the front of the fighter. Needs more chain choker. Or whatever. Uh, spike chain. Spike collar. Mine layer. Needle launcher. Neutron. What is this PM launcher? Pursuit missile launcher. Neat. Ha. That's how they do it. It's just a it's just a crossbar <laughs> with some with some robot arms that just let go. I like that this one's you know this one's fired up. It's ready to go. Why is this one down here? We don't know. Oh, maybe they're supposed to rotate. Oh, yeah, okay, fair enough. They rotate. Yeah, cool, cool. Does this have animation to it? That would have been sick. We always intended for there to be animations. No, no, no. They never said that. I'm just kidding. Uh, is there a torpedo launcher anywhere? I remember the torpedoes looking cool. Oh, let me go on. Let me see the escape pod. That's the escape pod? It looks like a missile. Did I click the wrong one? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, because it's like a ship. It has its own thing. Oh, look at this. Oh, I love it. Oh, it's adorable. Okay, that's great. All right, I'm going out on that. That was really great. All right, well, I'd like to thank whoever put that up on the garden because this is a super cool package. And if you like Escape Velocity like I do, or you want to dig into the files and make your own mods for it, I mean, I know there's still people doing that stuff. This is an incredible asset. And really all you need is a copy of Infinity. And you could probably take these now and you know export them to something that like something like Blender might be able to see. Yeah, I'm going to give that a try. I'll export this to Blender and I'll let you guys know. Not that anybody's interested. DXF will probably do it. Um, yeah, probably any of these will do it. I'll try DXF. I don't know. Blender, as I recall, Blender is kind of finicky about stuff. But yeah, I, my goal is I want to make like a big battle scene of UE and Voinian ships around Earth and use all legit stuff so it looks like it's right out of the game. Um, 
but yeah, that's it for now. Uh, if you did check this out, you know, thanks for taking a look. And, uh, it, you know, give me uh, some ideas what else you'd like to see. This was a suggestion from somebody who saw my render farm video and they pointed me in this direction. If you know of any other cool stuff like this, old Infinity files that need to be rendered out, uh, let me know because that's kind of my hobby these days. All right. Thanks for watching. Take care.